It almost seems like our entire society from top to bottom, so many things are in motion right now to try to hurt President Trump and to try to protect and enhance uh, Joe Biden. Have you seen it? Have you felt it? Sometimes it's almost imperceptible, right? Those algorithms that are doing their thing on social media, you see certain things, you don't see other things. And other times it's just in your face. The fake news trying to enhance Democrats, get their message out and trip up Republicans. Uh, George Stephanopoulos, remember, we've known him for a long time now, started out uh, in the Clinton administration doing Bill Clinton's dirty work, literally, more on that in a moment. It was just in your face, fake news. He had two big guests on, not the Good Morning America show, but the political show that he has on Sundays, uh, Pete Buttigieg and Nancy Mace. Buttigieg is the Secretary of Transportation, and Nancy Mace, of course, the Republican Congresswoman from South Carolina. All right, it's a formula trip up the Republican, try to, and enhance the Democrat message. First, it was Secretary Pete's turn. You know, the president got good reviews for his State of the Union, but our new poll shows that Donald Trump has the edge on critical issues like the economy, inflation, and crime. How do you explain that? How do you turn it around? Well, I'm one of those who believes that President Biden deserves more credit. What more can President Biden do on his own to secure the border? I'll leave it to her to explain the, the falsehoods. Donald Trump is taunting the president about debates. Think we're going to see them this year? Look, I, I can't speak to the campaign side while I'm uh, uh, here as secretary. What do you think? He's like, hey, talking about baseball with the guy. This is Secretary Pete. We got airplanes skidding off the runway everywhere. No questions about that. Strictly politics. And George, if you want to get political, how about asking this guy about all the nasty things he said about Joe Biden when he was running for president against him? Used his Iraq war vote as a weapon, abused Joe Biden. That's the kind of thing they do on these Sunday shows, <laughs> at least when it comes to Republicans. All right, after Pete Buttigieg got his wet kiss, then it was time for Nancy Mace. Our next guest is South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace, a Donald Trump supporter who gave candid and courageous testimony about her own experience as a rape victim weeks before launching her run for Congress in 2019. From some of us who've been raped, it can take 25 years to get up the courage and talk about being a victim of rape. And the first thing that happens when a woman comes out in public and says she's been raped, what is the first thing out of someone's mouth? Is that it didn't happen. This is why women do not come forward. They are afraid. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. So she wasn't expecting that. She was there to talk about 2024. They go back to 2019 to find those comments she made when she was a state house representative. That's five years ago. And she seems kind of emotional there, right? Talking about this uh, sexual trauma. They just hit her with it out of the blue. Uh, that would make anybody uncomfortable. And George makes it worse. And you've endorsed Donald Trump for president. Mm -hmm. uh, judges and two separate juries have found him liable for rape and for defaming the victim of that rape. How do you square your endorsement of Donald Trump with the testimony we just saw? Well, I will tell you, I was raped at the age of 16. Um, and any rape victim will tell you, I've lived for 30 years with a, an incredible amount of shame over being raped. I didn't come forward because of that judgment and shame that I felt. And um, it's a shame that you will never feel, George. And I'm not going to sit here on your show and be asked a question meant to shame me about another uh, potential rape victim. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. It's, it's actually not about shaming you. It's a question about no, Donald Trump. No, you are Trump. shaming You've me. You've endorsed Donald Trump for president. Right. Donald Trump has been found liable for rape by a jury. Donald Trump has been found liable for defaming the victim of that rape by a jury. It's been affirmed by a judge. It was he not a criminal the, court case, was, number one. Number two, I live with shame. And you're asking me a question about my political choices, trying to shame me as a rape victim, and I find it disgusting. And quite frankly, E. Jean Carroll's comments when she did get the judgment, joking about what she was going to buy, 
it doesn't, it, it makes it harder for women to come forward when they make a mockery out of rape, when they joke about it. Doesn't it's it not, make it harder okay. for women to come forward when they It makes it harder when other women joke about it, and she's joked about it. I find it offensive, and I also find it offensive that you're trying to shame me with this question. I'm not trying to shame you, you are. at all. In fact, I, I have dealt you with candid. this for 30 years. You know how hard it was to tell my story five years ago when they were doing a fetal heartbeat bill and there were no exceptions for rape, incest or, light, or and rape or incest in there? I had to tell my story because no other woman was coming I'm forth. Just no rape victims were represented. And you're trying to shame me this morning. I'm Amazing. You have to tiptoe incredibly delicately bringing up an issue like that on national television, out of the blue, there to talk about 2024. She was amazing. And George, <laughs> this is what they call mansplaining. There's a word for it, right? When, when a man tries to tell women what's what. Now, a lot of that is politically correct and over the top, but I think it totally applies right here. And I find it offensive, and this is why women won't come forward. Women won't come forward because they're defamed by those who perpetrate rape. Donald they Trump are judged and they're shamed. George knows all about it, right? George knows exactly how women feel, why they feel, who's saying what. Uh, and you can see clearly here, this is why they had that sham trial. This is why they found E. Jean Carroll to carry on and support her with all that money. So somebody like him could sit there and say, Donald Trump has been found liable to confuse America. That case, more on E. Jean and that horrific corrupt case in a moment. But back to Nancy Mace versus George. I mean, you keep saying I'm shaming you. There's you are. The question, it's, it is. It is. How is the question asking you about a presidential candidate who's You're been You're asking a rape victim. I'm, and there's no question about that. And you're, you're questioning you've courageously my political choices about because that. I've been raped. I think that's just No, I'm questioning your political choices because you're, you're supporting shaming me. You're someone who's been found me. liable for rape. Actually, I'm not trying to You are. You. That's exactly what you're doing. You're not answering the question. I think it's disgusting. Well, you're welcome to say that, but you also have to answer the question. Why are you supporting someone who's been found liable for rape? You have to answer the question. And when you sit on these programs, you can say whatever you want. They can ask whatever they want. They, don't, they often think that they're in charge of getting the answer. They're looking for an answer they, they want. Rather, it's not up to them. Ask the questions. People get to respond how they want to respond. A couple more things. Let's talk about January 6th. You had just been sworn into Congress on January 6th. <laughs> Let's go from sexual trauma to January 6th, which was three and a half years ago, almost. January 6th. Is this fair? You saw what happened to Pete Buttigieg. January 6th. Um, <laughs> this is why we call them the fake news. And this... They've both been president, and the American people, I believe, right now are overwhelmingly choosing Donald Trump, regardless of how you feel. So you've made it very clear you're comfortable with Donald Trump being found liable for rape, and you're comfortable with his actions on January 6th. I didn't say you're I was comfortable supported. with You're putting words into my mouth. You, you wouldn't condemn it. And you're, you're, I, no, you're putting words into my mouth. Well, are you comfortable with it? I support Donald Trump for president. So you're I just comfortable endorsed with it. him a few weeks ago. Even though he's been found liable for rape. In a civil judgment, not a criminal court case. But you, you just... go ahead and keep shaming women who've been raped. Good luck with that. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back. Wow, huh? Um, I'll get to him in a few more moments. But first, a quick review about how stupid and ludicrous this case was against Donald Trump. And I can say it. Uh, <laughs> e. Jean Carroll, she was on national television talking about how rape is sexy. This is somebody who's not credible at all. She had no evidence, zero. Kathy Hochul, actually, the governor of New York, changed the law just so she could bring her case forward. Doesn't matter if you were assaulted 60 minutes ago or 60 years ago. Under her new rule, new law, you could just come forward. It's almost impossible to defend yourself in that kind of scenario. Here's something you probably haven't heard. She was parading around on the cover of magazines back in 2019. This is what I was wearing 23 years ago when Donald Trump attacked me in a Bergdorf Goodman dressing room. That would have been in 1996, 23 years earlier. DKNY did not manufacture that dress until the, just a little tidbit about how incredible this person is. Also, where did this alleged assault happen? In Bergdorf Goodman, a famous department store that's still up and running, been around for about 100 years or so. And uh, E. Jean Carroll still goes there. 
You were in, in, you say you were in Bergdorf Goodman. I was coming out of Bergdorf's. Which was, was a store I heard you liked a lot. It's a posh and cozy. Your and whole just, face lights up when you talk about Bergdorf. I, just, by the way. I was just there today. Okay. It just, I just loved it. It makes no sense. All right, we have common sense. We're allowed to use it. Prosecutors, attorneys, judges, they have thrown that out, even some jurors, just to get Trump. Now I want to go back to George Stephanopoulos. Pretty high and mighty there, doing all that mansplaining. Well, let's do a little explaining about who George is. He parties with Jeffrey Epstein. Yep, the most notorious child molester in the history of, well, the world. Uh, at his mansion would party, as you know, with people like uh, Prince Andrew and also with, yeah, George Stephanopoulos. After Jeffrey Epstein was known as a sex offender against children, George Stephanopoulos showed up at his house. This has been reported. It's known. Uh, it was reported discreetly because they got to protect, you know, Stephanopoulos. It was December of 2010, and Jeffrey Epstein was sitting down for dinner with some of his famous friends, personalities who spanned the TV dial from morning to late night. There was George Stephanopoulos. I knew about Jeffrey Epstein. George Stephanopoulos did not. One of the highest paid men in television. What did they, what did George say when he got busted? I should have done more due diligence. It was a mistake to go. Uh, how much is this guy paid to tell the truth? 15, you don't get paid $15 million to tell the truth uh, over there at ABC. Here's something else you may not know about George Stephanopoulos. He was one of Bill Clinton's henchmen. And Bill Clinton, of course, had issues with women, right? I mean, and Stephanopoulos wrote about this in his 1999 memoir, George Stephanopoulos, All Too Human. And he used a degrading word that I would never use, and he put it in a book, bimbo, B-I-M-B-O. I'm only saying it because I'm quoting him here, from helping to choose a Supreme Court nominee to smothering another bimbo eruption. This was his job. CNN dropped the story after a single mention, and none of the other networks picked it up. We'd survived our first bimbo eruption. And he goes on like this. <laughs> Hillary was always the first to defend him on the bimbo eruptions. I mean, who writes a book like this? Keep going. My first bimbo eruption, a candidate for city council. How about that? I wonder who he's talking about. Is he talking about Paula Jones? Yeah, here, oh, more bimbo eruptions, huh, George? Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones. These are people, these are real people. We've come to know them, quite frankly. They're not bimbos. So there's George with that past that you now know talking to Nancy Mace in the most condescending, insulting manner imaginable. But it could not stop the fire that is Nancy Mace. I tell you what, I think she's a future vice president. I know, I don't agree with everything, but I sure agree with this. I said my piece on January 6th. I was, uh, I was very clear about how I felt about it. And I also, as you sa stated, I voted to certify the Electoral College for every single state in the country. Um, but uh, something's happened between now and then, and that was Joe Biden. And I listened to my voters. They move on. They don't, they don't ask me about January 6th. Maybe that's what you and the media, you guys talk about in your cocktail parties. But voters are not talking about it. They asked me about February 22nd, the day that Lake and Riley was murdered by an illegal immigrant. They asked me about October 8th, the day that Maddie Hines, a South Carolina girl, four-year-old girl murdered by an illegal immigrant who was deported under Donald Trump and allowed back in under Joe Biden's administration. They're talking about the over 8 million illegals who've come across our southern border um, in an invasion of our country and an actual threat to democracy allowing that to happen. That's that what they talk about. Wow, huh? I think she'd be incredibly effective as Donald Trump's vice presidential nominee. I mean, yeah, she, she wasn't always with Trump, but she is now. And there are a lot of people who've been lied to about Trump. She was lied to about Trump January 6th, who can come around. And I think she'd be a great ambassador, can we call her that, in that regard, to win some people over. Because to take this election, we need more than MAGA. All right, good luck, Nancy Mace. Shame on you, George Stephanopoulos, and we'll be right back.